All humane people should admit that they're jokers. That they're playing games and playing tricks. That I am doing it on you. I am most ready to admit this. I hoaxed you all into coming here to tell you what. It was a trap, you see. But I'm going to make it an entertaining trap so that uh, you won't feel so badly about it. We thought of life by analogy with a journey, with a pilgrimage, which had a serious purpose at the end. The thing was to get to that end. Success or whatever it is, or maybe heaven after you're dead. But we missed the point the whole way along. You go to a concert and you listen to somebody play Bach or Mozart or Beethoven. And what's all that about? You know, it isn't about anything. Except, dee 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 You know, that's what it's about. And so, in the same way, uh, the, as I conceive my work as a philosopher, I'm simply pointing out that existence is the same kind of a thing as a Bach invention. It's going this way and that way, and hills and waters going dee 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 all out there, and the fish are going around in it and uh, breeding and the ducks are doing this, that and the other. And that's the same thing as dee 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 So, uh, if you can uh, admit that, that that's what it's all about, you have a little problem. Because it's not only the threat that it really might be serious and that you shouldn't be laughing about, but it's also a kind of opposite. Then are you saying it's merely just fiddling around? I mean, you're saying it's only a game? Is that all there is to it? Well, now, what do you think? You see, this again is a question that everybody has to think things through. What did you want? <laughs> Didn't you want a game? Did you want it to be serious in the end? What, I mean, think about the question. What kind of a, a thing would you like God to be? What would you like to do for eternity? Really? For me, the thought that everything perishes in the heat death of the universe, like Russell's credo, you know, yeah. it is so depressing, so awful, but um, that it, it, it just seems to put a question mark behind everything we do. All our accomplishments, all our deeds just seem so trivial in light of this cosmic doom that awaits us. Does it seem more natural for people to believe that the sun goes around the earth rather than the other way around? Well, obviously, because it looks that way. I see. And how would it look if the earth went around the sun? Um, well, I suppose... <laughs> yes. I see what you mean. This little machine shows Ptolemy's model. The planets were imagined to go around the Earth. Supported by the Church through the Dark Ages, Ptolemy's model effectively prevented the advance of astronomy for 1,500 years. Finally, in 1543, a quite different explanation of the apparent motion of the planets was published by a Polish cleric named Nicholas Copernicus. It's just that I look at everything from a religious point of view. Why is there anything at all rather than just nothing?
Well, how the bloody blue blazes should I know? I'm the woman, you are the philosopher. There isn't just one picture of the world, there's lots of different language games, different forms of life, different ways of doing things with words. They, they don't all hang together. What do you mean? All I mean is the limits of my language are the limits of my world. We keep running up against the walls of our cage. We've been brought up, you see, in a cultural context in which the universe is presided over by somebody serious. And it's only very, very occasional obscure references in the Jewish and Christian scriptures to the idea that God dances. Of course, in Hindus, they know Shiva dances, and all the gods dance, and they're represented in the, in the dance. But in our way of looking at things, no. Back, deep down in, there is something that you must respect. You, you, mustn't, you mustn't laugh in church. Especially if you got in front of the throne of heaven. Everybody would be dead silent. Wow, you see, I mean, that's really serious. Here is the Father Almighty world without end. And you watch out, don't you? laugh. Why not? Because Father Almighty, world without end, is a very insecure fellow. If anybody laughed, he might feel uneasy, you know, that there's something, uh, something wrong going on. <laughs> Someone challenged his power. So, he is a, he's a funny fellow, you see, as we mythologize ultimate reality in the form of this cosmic uh, grandpapa who is also a king and is demanding above all things reverence and respect. So it's difficult for us because of that cultural heritage to accept, to accommodate our common sense to the idea that the web might basically be playful. That it might be like somebody saying won't you come and play? The philosophy hunts for the essence of meaning. <laughs> it's no such thing. There's no such thing. Just the way we do things in everyday life. Listen to me. We imagine the meaning of what we say as something queer, mysterious, hidden from view. But nothing is hidden. Everything is open to view. It's just. It's just. Philosophers who muddy the waters. Uh, Napoleon asked him what role God played in the construction and regulation of the heavens. Laplace replies, sir, I had no need for that hypothesis. Our posturings our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe, are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. Likewise, all will become.